Can be four square. We're going to continue in worship. Oh, oh, oh. 
Good morning, and thank you for joining us online. Uh, it's a little different with you not in the room. It reminds me of my first few years of ministry. So this is a, a good time, and it's especially important that we do this now. It is necessary that we uh, take the actions and the steps that we're taking. Again, we want to thank you for joining us online. And what we're going to do right now is take time to do two things. Normally in this time uh, during our worship service, we receive our tithe and offering. What we would like to encourage you to do is continue to be generous, even though we're in our homes or wherever you might be, that you can give online, uh, you can mail your tithe or your offering. Uh, this morning, actually, someone came and dropped their gift off. And so there's just a lot of ways that you can continue to be generous. There's one other thing that I'd like to do right now. I'd like to take a little time and pray and think about those that are in need around us. What we can do right now is just not turn inward, but continue to look out. Who are your neighbors that might be vulnerable right now? Maybe they're dealing with underlying health issues. Maybe they're elderly. And fear has really gotten a hold of them, so much so that they don't even want to go outside. This might be a time for you to reach out into community. Think about that. Pray about that. What I'd like to do right now is just take a few moments with our worship team quietly playing. I want you to take time wherever you are and just ask God to give you the strength and the courage to reach out to those that are around you. Let's do that. Father, we want to thank you today for your generosity extended to us, that you have given us great salvation. You've poured your grace out upon our lives. Lord, today as we meet in homes, we meet in places that aren't necessarily right here in a church building, but the church is still active, the church is still alive. We just pray that you would continue to infuse us with your life, with your strength, Lord, give us eyes to see our community. Lord, we know that fear has gripped many hearts today, but we want your courage, your strength, your love. 
to abide in our lives. Father, we just thank you for your generosity again. We thank you for the generosity of so many more that um, are in this community. Lord, we pray that you continue to touch us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray and we say together, amen. Amen. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a little pause in our study in the book of Nehemiah. And the reason we're going to do that is because we recognize that the last few weeks have been difficult for our nation and our world. We've been witness to some major global disruptions in our health and economy. And what I want to do is just thank those that have continued to pray. I know there are many that have interceded for our communities, for our nation, for our world. And I want to encourage you to continue to do that. So here's what's been going on around the Canby Foursquare Church community. Our leadership team has spent hours upon hours praying and planning for the well-being of this community. And I'm really proud of our team getting together and really wanting to seek out what the heart of God is, what is the will of God during these days that we face uh, many churches, many communities uh, in quarantine, isolating. But we want to still be forward-thinking with the gospel of Jesus You know, we've gathered and we're we're going to continue to gather to seek God's wisdom, his wisdom for the local church, his wisdom through prayer and really through some of our local government leaders. We've been tapping into what they're saying about the times, the days that we're living in. And with that theme, uh, the theme that we've been presenting and talking about is that it's hard to get to good. And it is hard to get to good. It takes prayer. It takes time. And so what we've decided to do is we've decided to uh, measure each week whether we meet the following Sunday. Uh, We're not just canceling services for the next four weeks. We uh, We might well do that. But what we're more inclined to do is just really pray and seek the will and heart of God each week. So every Wednesday, we're going to be gathering at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to be praying. And what I'd like you to do, if you have time to do that, you pray as well. 11 o'clock every Wednesday morning, we're just praying for God's direction. Wednesday afternoon, we'll be sending out bulletins, uh, Facebook. We're going to be communicating with you as to whether we'll be having church on Sunday here on campus or online. Just remember, we'll always be having church. It will be either here or online. So we want you to just be in tune with that. We're going to do our best to communicate. We've really worked hard at making sure that we pay attention to what's going on. This is amazing for us. And the reason we're taking this approach, it's because we are seeking God for not just our present realities, but for our future possibilities. Because we know that God is up to something. While we totally recognize the gravity of this crisis, God has always used these moments to do more in the hearts of people. And so we're going to continue to ask you to pray. We're going to continue to ask you to be the church, the body of Christ. There's another reason our week-by-week approach is so necessary. We want to make decisions that cover the, the, the current situation that we're facing because everything is so fluid. We want to make sure that we continue to pray and that we continue to lead well. I don't want us to be relieved of the responsibility or even the pressure, the urgency for us to pray and lead each day. We need to stay attentive. We need to stay vigilant. And when we make a decision that affects several weeks in advance, sometimes we can easily lose our spiritual sharpness for what's going on today. That's one thing that we've noticed in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was sharp every single day. It tells us that he, he, he took inventory every day of what was going on. What was the status of the people? What was the status of the repairs being made in the wall? And then he created a safe place for people to work. He set up watchers. He set up warriors. He set up workers. So this is what we want to do. We want to take that same template, that same pattern, Something is happening spiritually. We know that. It's just not about our physical condition, about our physical state of being. Something is taking place spiritually, and that is much bigger than what we see physically. I want to give you one more reason our week-to-week approach is so critical. Uh, We're modeling right now for a younger generation. 
And what we're doing is we have a lot of uh, young eyes looking at us to see how we manage crisis. How do we walk through difficult times? And so what we want to do is we want to walk through these moments, these times in a very godly way, a very um, wise way, so that, so that the, the, a younger generation can see exactly what we're doing and they can learn from what we're about. We want to navigate this in a godly way, a biblical way. So we want to make sure that we're doing this so that it, it can be a model for future generations. Do we model fear and panic? That's the question. Or courage and peace? This crisis is not just about today. It's about the many tomorrows that are to come. So I'm just going to ask you that you really look deep into your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you take inventory to see where you stand in the current situation, the crisis that we face. So there are a few questions that I'm sure all of us are asking. I know there's questions that I've been asking myself. One of those questions is, what does the Bible say about living in difficult times? Fortunately, the Bible has a lot to say about living in difficult times. But here's what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. It's one of my favorite passages. It says this, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding right now this very moment for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I read this passage of scripture and there's a few things that stand out. The first thing that stands out to me is God's assurance in our own life. That what he's telling us is that nothing will separate us from his love. That the most important thing that we can get a hold of and understand is how much God loves us. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 8, he loves us so much that he gave his only son. A few verses stand out to me. One is, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. But then it also says, he is right now interceding at the right hand of the Father. Those two things are things that we can take to the bank. Those are things that we can have great assurance. It's a foundation for us to stand on, and it's true, and it's real. And so today, just take assurance in the fact that you have a God that loves you, and that his son who loves you is interceding for us on the right hand of the Father. I think the other thing is that we know we face trouble. Because we have these assurances doesn't mean that we don't face hardship. I mean, it's very clear here when you read this passage. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? There is trouble. There's trouble all around us. But it's no different now than it was during the Apostle Paul's time. In fact, if you take these seven issues of trouble, what you're going to understand is they break down into the same two categories that, that all of us are facing today. One is health and one is wealth. We're always dealing with our health. We're always dealing with our wealth. Those are the two things that get to the core of some of our fears. And so today, what we can do is be confident in the fact that Jesus takes care of our health and he guards our wealth. All things belong to him. There's nothing that we have that he hasn't given us, both our health and our wealth. There's something else here is that it's promised that we will have strength. I think one of the greatest verses in the Bible is right here in Romans chapter 36 and 37. It says, 
As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And here it is. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That word more than conquerors in the English is three words. Actually, in the Greek, it's, it's a compound word. And it means this, or it says this. It's hooper nekeho. It's a compound word that means hyper conqueror. The Bible's saying here, because of Jesus Christ in our life, because he intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father, that we are super conquerors. That what he's given us to overcome is more than we'll ever need. And that we have, let's say it this way, we have the spiritual octane to go through what God has us going through. Remember growing up, I was 16 years old. My favorite car in all the world was a 69 Chevelle with a big 396 engine in it. It had uh, racing gears. It was amazing. My buddy had it, and uh, we would go and drive around. It always felt when you were driving in it that in order to keep the speed limit, you kept, you kept holding back. Now, if you needed to go to the store, you could use the Chevelle, and, and you can stay at 25 miles an hour. Uh, but if you wanted to really be hyper, if you wanted to be supercharged, then you could go to the store at 100 miles an hour. You'd just get a lot of tickets. But the capability was there. And that's what God's saying about us. We have the capability to be more than conquerors, hyper conquerors in Jesus. I love that. He hasn't just given you just enough. He's given you more than enough. And that's always the nature of our gracious God, that he gives us more than we need. The second question is this, and it has to do with not wanting to miss what God is up to right now. I think the question we probably should be asking is during these times, these difficult times, how do I grow in my relationship with Jesus Christ? I think a lot of us are just thinking about surviving, and I get it. I understand it. I mean, look at the lines at Costco. Go to the stores. I mean, I'm surprised that the number one commodity sought after the most right now, toilet paper. It's just amazing to me. But nonetheless, there, there's something there that's driving that. I think we have to ask ourselves, what is it? Why are we motivated to do some of the things we're doing? I understand being cautious. I understand being prudent. But I also want to grow during these times. Not just stay the same, but I want to learn. And so what I'm thinking about right now is, number one, what do you do during this time? Do this. Rest. I know. Just rest. Let your soul be still. For the next few weeks, there's going to be a lot of social distancing. <laughs> it might give you an op opportunity to just take time and rest. Maybe you need a Sabbath. Maybe you're able to take that now. Uh, working at home, wherever you might be, I think it's important that we take this time to really, really rest. Life is going to, in a lot of ways, slow down, as it already has. I remember during 9-11, there were about four days where nothing was going on, and it was an opportunity just to take a deep breath. I know the nation's in a crisis, but take a deep breath and just be able to rest. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight. He says, come to me, you who are weary, you are burdened, and I will give you rest. A lot of weariness right now. Uh, I look up the word weary and what it really means, literally means, it means to be beaten down. Beaten down so much you can't go on. And there are those circumstances around us that would want to beat us down, would want to keep us from moving forward. Would you do this? Just take a break, even from the news for a while. Take a break from everything right now that's bombarding you, even in your own mind, those thoughts that are swirling. Just take a break and give it to Jesus. The Bible says, and Jesus says in his own words, give them to him and there'll be rest for your soul. The other thing, including rest for me, is to reconnect. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So take this time to reconnect with God. Maybe there's been a distance. Maybe because of uh, the hustle bustle of life, you haven't really taken time in the last week or two or maybe months where you reconnect with God. I want to encourage you to do that, that you would light up your devotional life again, that prayer would just be something that would 
come natural in your, in your heart and your mind again. And that you would not be distant from him. That as you draw close to him, the promise that James gives, gives us is that he will draw close to us. So reconnect. Reconnect with the power of God's Holy Spirit. Reconnect what your, with what your mission is in life. And then reconnect with the people around you. This is a great time to reconnect in your marriage, husbands and wives. Reconnect. Take some time. Look at each other. Talk. Annette are going to be, uh, and I are going to be doing that because the Major League Baseball season has been pushed off two weeks. So we have open space that we want to reconnect. So you can do that in your marriage. Take time and do that with your children. Um, I'm reminded this last weekend, my sons and I took some time and we headed over to Central Oregon. We went to a men's retreat. And we had this beautiful moment, these beautiful moments, really, they were, on the way over, uh, where I asked each one of my sons how their children were doing, my grandchildren. And we took time to talk about each one of them individually. And it was great. And I wanted to reconnect. And, and, and I asked my oldest son, Ronnie, I said, how is Ella doing? What is her gifting? What do, you, what do you think she might be doing in life? What do you think her vocation might be? And how can I be a better grandfather to her? How can I reconnect with her? I asked that same question about Jackson and Jojo. And then I asked Ryan, who was with me, how do I do the same for Stevie? How do I do this for Calder? It was about a 45-minute conversation. But it had everything to do with reconnecting in relationship. Take time to reconnect. Reconnect in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Reconnect with the beautiful people that God has put around you. Don't leave your friends out. Talk to them. Spend time with them. I want to encourage that. So we rest during this time. We reconnect. And the other thing that we can do is reset. This is a time where a reset button is being pushed. I know there are a lot of other things to think about. But this is a time you can ask God to clarify your call. You can ask God to clarify your purpose. Because I know sometimes that can get hazy. It can get tarnished with all that goes on as a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, someone who goes to school, a student. We forget that we are called according to his purposes. So reset and ask God, what is it that you have for me? God, what is it you want me to drop off my life? What is it that I don't need to be doing anymore? Would you show those things to me? And God, what is it that you want me to pick up? What are those things you want me to continue to do or new things that you want me to do? It has everything to, to do with just reconnecting. So how can I use this time to grow in the next few weeks? Rest, reconnect, and reset. So here's a healthy mindset. I've been asking the Lord, well, what should my attitude be? Because sometimes our attitude can go haywire, especially when things don't go the way that we want them to go. We can get all sideways on what's happening around us. But what is a healthy mindset? Well, 1 Peter gives us one, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. I love this passage. It's, in fact, one of my favorites. It says this, says, first of all, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety, all your cares on him, because he cares for you. Be alert. Here we are. Be alert and of sober, sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast to him be the power forever and ever. If there was ever a scripture that fits our current time and circumstances, this is it. 
I would encourage you to read that several times. I know I'm going to go away today and read this a few more because it talks to me about my posture, my attitude, about being humble before the Lord, uh, about understanding that I am submitted under the mighty hand of God, that I have nothing, absolutely nothing t- to worry about. It says here that we need to walk in His strength and His glory. So read this because this talks about, again, our attitudes. What I want to encourage you to do is one other thing. I, I want our attitudes to be right and healthy and correct when we talk about the authorities in our life. I know some of you, when you heard about quarantines or you heard about a state of emergency, there may have been some of you that thought, well, that's just our government telling us what to do. Can I say this to you? God has put principalities and powers in our life to help guide us. We don't know everything there is to know. But one thing is for sure, we need to listen to the wisdom of even our government officials and and hear what they're having to say. I know this last week, I've been in touch with several people that lead in our community, been in touch with our first responders, asking them, talking to them about what it may look like if things really break out here and can be. I've been very concerned, been praying, and there's no fear in all this, it's just investigating. It's kind of like Nehemiah again, who takes his donkey and rides around the city at night, takes notes. That's what we've been doing. That's what I've been doing. But I also know that God uses other people in our lives to help give us the right direction. Whether we chafe against it a little bit or not, they're there. People are there for a reason. Leaders are there for a reason. Would you do this? Would you pray for our leaders? Pray for our governor. Pray for our house, pray for our Congress, pray for our president, pray for those that are in authority over us, because we want to make sure that we submit to the mighty hand of God. Titus says that, Titus says that in chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, he says, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and always to be gentle toward everyone at one time we too were foolish we were disobedient we were deceived and we were enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures we lived in malice and envy being hated and hating one another what he's saying here is that our life is different in Jesus Christ our life is absolutely changed Take in the wisdom that's around you. We want you to stay healthy. We care about your well-being. We want you to be wise and, 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 and soak in some of the counsel that you're hearing throughout the next few days. We want you to take note of all of those things that are being, that are being said. The other reason I, I'm really encouraging you to do this is because Canby Foursquare Church has always been a church community that helps community that helps the areas, that we reach out in the areas that we're part of, that that we reach out to our neighbors. So here's what I want to say about that. Let's continue to be wise, to stay healthy, so we can be helpers and not depend on others' help. Let us be a solution to the problem. We want to make sure that we don't bury our head in the sand. We want to make sure that we stay safe but we always want to be reaching out to the community around us. God has called this church to do that. What this church is known for is it's known for its generosity. It's known for reaching out to those who might be vulnerable. So again, as I started this message with, I'm going to ask, I'm going to encourage you to look around. Reach out to those that might be vulnerable. I heard a story the other day, just recently kind of broke my heart that a young lady was walking into a grocery store and she heard someone calling her name or or at least calling out to her. I don't know if they knew her name, but calling out to her. And she looked over and in this car was a window rolled down just a few inches and it was an elderly couple sitting inside that were terrified to go into the grocery store. And so they called this young woman over and asked if if she would go in and shop for them and she slid the, the grocery list right through the window and this... This, this young person took it and said, absolutely, I'd be glad to help you. 
There are people right now that are dealing with this, and it's very real, especially to our elderly population. We want to be so concerned, so prayerful, and also lend help, lend a helping hand to those around us. Just kind of be looking, be looking around, pay attention, lift up your head, lift up your eyes. You can see it in the face of others, and I'm going to say this especially in our vulnerable population. Be paying attention. When you see fear, run to it and bring comfort. That's exactly what Jesus did. We want to make sure that we're helping others. So here's what we're about. What we're about is getting together again on a Wednesday as a team and praying over the next Sunday service, whether we're online or on campus. This immediately does not affect our weekly activities and gatherings. Those will be determined by the leaders of those gatherings. And so they will notify each one of the groups that are gathering if they are or aren't meeting. So it just makes it very simple for all of us. We are going to be wanting to make sure that we keep you up on everything. We're going to keep you posted via email. There's an email blast. By the way, if you're not on our email address or uh, you don't get emails from the church, go online. You can find what that is. Sign up. We want to get you emails. That's one way that we're wanting to communicate. Another is through the website, as I did last week. I gave an address to the congregation. If you haven't seen that, go online, Facebook or our website, and you can see it's there. We want to continue to stay in touch with you. We're determined to stay in touch and keep you current on the activities that are happening really just around this community and around the world. And here's one thing I want to leave you with. Please keep this in mind. Keep this in front of you. Jesus is our living hope. And that we're always going to be leaning and depending upon him. So take some time right now. Would you just, wherever you are, just bow your head. We're going to pray and just ask God to encourage us and give us the strength we need to go through the days ahead. Father, we want to thank you today for your amazing grace. And that even during times like this, you have set aside the body of Christ. You have set aside Christ's followers to raise up and to shine the light of Jesus Christ. We know that this is a time of great disruption, a time of health disruption, and our economy is being disrupted but Lord, let us not run and hide. Let us not shrink back in our souls and our spirit. But let us be courageous in Jesus' name. Let us be courageous to shine the light of Jesus Christ. Let us be aware of the community around us that's in need. Lord, let us be good. And let us be um, uh, the, the disciples that follow you, that see the vulnerability of people right now. Those that are in fear right now. Let us not be people of fear. Because we know that your perfect love casts out all fear. So, Lord, we embrace who you are for us today. You are more than a conqueror, and you have caused us to be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. It's in your name that we pray, and we say together, amen.